Hey guys, what's up? It's me, Fizz here, and today I'm here to tell you that we hit our goal of 50 subscribers and whatever likes, because I am recording this earlier. So I don't know how many likes the video will have when I upload this, but yeah, we hit whatever we hit. So thanks guys so much. Now I've decided that I'll break down this combat system into parts so that you guys can easily set it up. So here's the list of parts. So part one will be teaching you how to set it up. Part two will teach you how to add the animations. Part three will teach you how to change the cooldowns, the damage. Part four will teach you how to make it so that when you equip the tool, the combat system disables and part five was a special part where i'll show you how to turn it into the tool so let's get into that so pretty much all you have to do is go to the description and there's a model in the description once you've got that go inside your inventory grab the model and paste it inside workspace and inside that model there will be multiple models so quite simply all you have to do is grab a model and it'll be named after the location where it's supposed to go just grab the model, drag it to that area. In this case, replicated storage goes into replicated storage. And then all you have to do is ungroup that model. I already have that done, so I don't really have to do that. But make sure that you do that with all of the other models as well. So just repeat that same process for all of the models inside, except for the animations model. You don't have to move that anywhere. All right, so first up, go to service script service and go inside the combat folder and go to the combat script inside the combat script there's a folder called animations with a folder called enemy and player this is where you put your player animations and your enemy animations now go to the rig you want to animate and they should be named after the folder an enemy folder and a player folder enemy goes to enemy and player goes to player now inside the animation you can select the animation you want then go to the top bar, click plugins, and inside plugins find an icon called animation editor. Now it should open up a tab. Now all you have to do is click on the rig you want, and this shows the player animations. Now you can select the animation you want, like left punch or right punch, whatever you want. Just go ahead, make sure the animation is set to action, and publish it to Roblox. Then submit the animation and copy the ID. Close that out of that and go to where you want to paste the animation then click on the animation and go to its properties then change the animation id with the new animation id by pasting inside the designated area now to add the block animation go to inside start character scripts go to the combat folder open it up and there will be a script called blocking inside blocking just open up the f script and there's an animation called block now just go to the player animation just open up the animation editor again go to the player animations and find block there you'll be able to find the animation just make sure it's set to action and then publish the animation to roblox then just click submit copy the id again close that and go back to the script and you'll be able to paste that into the animation id in the properties section of the block animation make sure to add all the animation ids or else the animations won't play because Roblox can't let me give you my animations. Alright, so first off, to change some of the cooldowns, go inside the combat folder and server script service and open up the combat script. There you'll find some variables that you can change up. First off, we have the basic damage, which is what happens when you click on your first four basic M1s. Then you have your final damage, which is the last M1, which is supposed to do more damage than basic M1s. Then we have our basic stun and we have our final stun, which is how long the player is stunned for that duration. Pretty much that's all that you can change based in that, this script. Now I'll move on to the next script. Alright, so first off, just go into the starter character scripts, combat folder and open up the punching script. There we'll be able to change the cooldowns on how long it takes for basic m1 right now i've set it to 0.5 all you have to do is change these weights to the amount of time you want your m1s to take all right so inside the pack there's a folder called disabling all right i'm gonna grab this sword from the toolbox and just add it into the workspace and move it down to my starter pack now 
very easily. All I have to do is copy the disabling script and just paste it inside the tool. Now, I, without really doing anything, now everything's done and the sword will work while the combat system disables when I equip the sword, as you can see here. As you can see, the punching system has stopped working, but the sword is working by itself. But when I unequipped it, the combat system works. Alright, so go to the description and grab the model called Fizz's Tool Pack. And then go to your inventory and inside your inventory you'll find the model. Then just insert it into workspace and open it up. It's pretty much the exact same, just do the exact same things as set up. Put the things in their correct place and most of the things are the exact same. Except for the fact that the combat folder is now inside the, t the tool that you place in starter pack. Now the blocking script will be inside the combat and you just have to change the animations and do everything pretty much the same. The only difference is that the combat folder is now inside the combat tool. And that's pretty much it. Now there's one more thing that I have to mention and I will tell you that right now in this next clip. This is really important. If you think that the combat system isn't working on a dummy that you imported into the game, there's a reason why they're inside starter character scripts. There's two bool values called stunned and blocking. This shows whether the character is blocking or whether they're stunned. If you are making a dummy, then make sure to add two bool values cool. called stunned and blocking. This shows whether they're blocking or stunned and that's really important. That's it. And if it's not working, just know that it do definitely does work. You can test it out inside the uncopy lock game in the description. Thanks and fizz out. So someone asked me how to change the effects, so I'll just go over this in a basic way. So pretty much you just want to go into the combat script and inside there, there's an area called effects and there's an effects folder inside the combat script. Inside the effects folder, there's three parts called block effect, break effect, hit effect, and these each contain an attachment which are moved into the player that you hit and then are the effects inside the attachment are played out. These are can be changed by changing up the script and these are put into the character based on when they're hit. The attachment hit means that they've just been hit by a basic M1 and we just pasted it inside the humanoid root part and then make the effects emit that are located inside the attachment. For the hit effect there are just these effects and you, I just make them emit the amount of times that I want them emit. There's also one located at the else, and the reason it's located at an else is because at the top, there's an if that shows whether they're blocking or not, and if it's false, then anything inside here will play out, but if, it's, if they are blocking, then it will do a block effect instead. So pretty much it's the exact same for everything, just like that, other than the final hit. For the final hit, it's a bit different. Because combo 5 is the final punch and I added it so that when you hit with the final punch then the block breaks. So you just have to go to the else inside the final punch and there's a block break effect instead.